I got information from fishermen on the dock that they've been on all the uh, stone crab traps out there close to East Cape. That's a little bigger. Oh, look at him lay on his side. They're right. You don't have to walk to the. There you go. That's money shot there. Give you plenty. Oh, I think you can see him now. A little That's cobia. cobia, baby. You want to net him? It's in the big yeti. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. So I get you all the way up here, and it's a little windier than I had, had planned. And it's out of the north, and uh, the reef is getting really sloppy. And Word on docks, there's been a bunch of triple tails out in the Florida Bay, and I was like, we can do that, right? <laughs> so, talked you into it, and I don't know if you enjoyed it or not, but man, it was fun. No, I love it, man. Listen, we're, we get we get up here, we get four days of fishing or what have you, mm -hmm. and it's really nice to do something different every day. Right. Try to look at something, see something different. So anytime we do something that we're not used to doing, I'm all about it. Good morning, Captain. Stevie boy. The winds blow, I'm gonna have to do something new today. What are we doing? I'm gonna run you out into the Florida Bay and look for some uh, big triple tails on the lobster gear. Really? Yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah, a little sight fishing today, oh, I but love uh, that. a little different color water. I'm lo I love when we do something different. That's, that's kind of like what this place has to offer. That bay is right there. There's a lot of them floating around since Hurricane Ian, and uh, I think we can make a day of it. And there's gonna be cobias, bull sharks. You know, we got some bycatch too, but let's uh, see if we can get some big triple tails today. I'm excited. You know how much I love the golf, dude. Yeah, buddy. All right, it's your color. What do I need we to need do? a little help getting it back up. For I got some pilchards to okay. feed the cobias. It was pretty simple setup. Just had to have some gulp shrimp, and of course, we took a scoop of pilchards with us to make sure, whatever swam by us, we'd have something ready to go. Got a full moon, a little windy. Go check out what the, the bay has to offer. Be a nice change of scenery, bro. We'll have to take turns hunting for them. I, I gotta catch one too. <laughs> you thinking we're gonna see some what, triple tails? Maybe some cobias? Triple tails are in one area, then uh, we'll, we'll check out as many lobster pots as we can and get a feel for it, if they're floating or not. You know, we'll know pretty quick. Well, you got the tower, we got the trolling motor. If they, uh, the ultimate bay boat. Yeah. It's big and it's comfy. There's a, an area holding um, some bull sharks, and you can get the bull sharks up on the chum. Kobe's going to be right there with them. We'll... We got that Bonita there. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah That'll get the shark fired up. Yeah, we're rolling out to the spot. You know, I got information from fishermen on the dock that they've been on all the uh, crab traps and uh, stone crab traps out there close to East Cape which is about 20, 25 miles. And, you know, we left, it was windy. And as we got to that 20 mile mark, the, we were getting in the lee of the Cape and it started to get really nice. The water was murky, but as we're flying at 40 miles an hour, I started to see some, even though we weren't in the area I was headed to, I started to feel like, wow, when we get there, it's good. this might be something we can really enjoy ourselves doing. And we went with the lightest rods we had possible because we're, we're you know, obviously, you can make anything fun. It just all depends on what you throw at it, right? If you're throwing heavy stuff at a small fish, it's not, you know, it's not that fun. So take it down as far as you can. And so the rig was the fast action light Daiwa spinning rod, like a seven foot rod. And boy, was it fun. I mean, literally having to pull up, uh, see them from a little ways away. You got in the tower, so you knew it was coming beforehand, you know? I think you saw just as many as I did in the tower. They were, uh, if they were floating, yeah, they're they were pretty just easy a little bit different color yeah. than the buoys. And after a while, there was a, ocean of buoys, so we were in, we had all day to hop around looking for the one. Got to work on my uh, side You got to do that bat, bass flip. You got a lot of wind. There it is. Oh! He's chasing that thing, buddy. 
This water's so murky. That's a different one. Ooh, fish on. Second Got cast, it. baby. Well, that's a nice warm up fish. <laughs> Oh, I like that, man. That's fun. They are so strong, dude. Cool fish. Be ready for that big boy. Oh, I lost your uh, grub, too. <laughs> you know, they kind of remind me of uh, Goliath groupers, believe it or not, you know? Like the floating version. Color-wise, for sure. Yeah, color-wise. Look at all, it's all tail, man. Yeah. Get that rag off of it. All tail. Yeah, the triple tail is a really neat fish. When I was a kid, I had one in a fish tank, and they're just so aggressive, and they're so, to me, they're like a rhinoceros. I say that all the time, <laughs> but they're just like bulletproof, right? They got this hide on them that is just incredibly strong. You're not gaffing them. You can try all you want. You're, you're gonna come up with scales. That's all you're gonna get. Um, but, but a cool fish, it's an old fish to me. It's kind of like a Goliath grouper that lives on the surface, kind of, you know, he runs the deal. Any shrimp, anything that comes by is getting eaten. Now you guys' attention. Oh, gosh. Oh, he went crazy. That's, is that the same one? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you, uh, if you put it close, they're jumping on it. Oh, he jumped, though. I told him to jump. That's a nice one there. There it is. Getting there. The beautiful thing about the uh, triple tail, besides they're really good to eat, uh, the new regulations are 18 inches, and that was really turned to be our issue that whole day was just finding one that big. You know, we were close. We were probably in that 14, 15 inch mark on the bigger side. Jumpers, biters. You know, this fish is, to me, is like a dang tank. It is strong, solid, huge scales. Um, and we got to the point where we were just throwing at the larger fish. We drove by hundreds that we didn't even cast it. We got a lot of meat on them, but they gotta be 18 inches to keep. All right, Scotty, find me another. Warming up, the big boys are coming up with the sunrise. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. BioEsque Solutions, clean, disinfect, protect. Waypoint TV. The destination for outdoor entertainment. Yeti, built for the wild. Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa. Golden Boat Lifts. And by Killer Dock. Like what you've seen so far? Well, you can see every episode of every season of Into the Blue for free. Go to waypointtv.com, click Ways to Watch to learn how to download the app or watch on your smart TV. You know, I learned a lot too with that uh, artificial that he, they mouthed it. I didn't, you know, I had no idea that those guys mouthed stuff. I thought they were just immediately gulpers and it disappeared. But no, they actually grabbed it, then they spun it around, and then I knew that it was in his mouth when he started swimming back to the buoy. And I'd set up on him. So, you know, you said, hey, try a pelcher next time, try a pelcher. So I did that, and we actually got to watch them hold it where he caught it by the tail, and he'd be out there with the head and then he'd turn it sideways and then spin it around. He was actually taking the stuff down head first, which is, I didn't realize that they were actually doing that, but that's cool. He's still, he's turning the head on it. Oh, he, what? It's this gonna be the longest bite of all times. This is very interesting here. That's it, how they do it out offshore. They grab them and just hold them until they get away from everything else. Well, he's dead. I don't know what he's holding it for. He can't get it in his mouth. <laughs> oh, he got it that time. Wow, he just had to make the a tip proper of the, arrangement. The tip of the tail sticking out. <laughs> well, you know the head's in him. Oh. I don't know if the connection is going to work out, but we can try it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're good. We got a lot of bait. Circle hooks doing his job. Well, you ate a dead one. <laughs> oh, where's that doormat? I want to do my rag. Whoop! Nice Perfect. release.
Hey, this is Captain Scott Walker in the Blue TV. I'd like to take a minute today to talk to you about our new Rodan anchoring system and electric trolling motor. Gone are the days of needing 600 foot anchor line, 30 foot of chain, and a 30 pound anchor. With the new battery technologies happening every day, our lithium ion batteries by Battleborn can easily power the Rodan trolling system for 12 hours longer than I want to be on the water. Our Rodan trolling motor is simple to deploy. Detach it from the neck brace, step on the pedal, drop it overboard. All the heavy lifting's done. This is it for the rest of the day. We hit our favorite feature, anchor mode. In anchor mode, we can set up on top of any wreck and even the west hump. We put our Rodan to the test just recently. We were at the hump on a very rough day, sea conditions four to six feet, current up to three knots. We were just curious enough to see if the Rodan can actually hold us in place in the middle of the Gulf Stream. We set up for tunas, dropped the Rodan in, and we were anchored right there for 30 minutes and never moved closer to the hump for the entire 30 minutes. Water was rushing by, the tunas are blowing up behind us, and we could step away from the helm and get busy doing battle with the tunas and not have to worry about coming back to the hump to start a drift over. What a great feature. If you're not happy where you set up, it's just a matter of adjusting it five foot at a time with a push of a button. Me and Steve and our 36 Elephant have the perfect Rodan trolling motor for our boat. There are many more sizes out there. Get the one that fits your needs. Trust me, you'll love it. So I think that, that buoy line kind of led us close to a waypoint you had, mm -hmm. and you wanted to check that out. You're right, we uh, did get a, uh, on one string that was really holding a lot of triple tails, but it was taking me away from the area I wanted to fish, and I realized that we were really close to a piece of bottom I had that we usually can catch some really cool stuff on. So we took a break and went and tried it out. You know, obviously once I heard that you said that we're gonna, the goal is to get the bull sharks around in order to get the cobias that are following the bull sharks, um, and we saw so many jacks showering. I mean, just annihilating the bait fish on the surface. Great. I, I immediately knew that Jack Carval is a great bloody meat for the uh, for the sharks to attract the sharks. So I'm like, swing over there, you know. And we made some casts, and we caught a couple quick Jack Carvals, and um, I saved them, you know, because that is going to be what brings the sharks in. I need to come out here more often. What you got, Scott? Ah, uh, some bait on top. You want to put a. Uh... Jack Cravels, got I'll a couple of filters. You, I'll put whatever you tell me, just tell me what. Jack Cravels just swam under the boat. It's funny, I don't see what they're eating and it's gotta, be, it's gotta be some sort of a shrimp. It's tiny, I see it flipping there. You wanna save it for shark bait? Yes, please. Sharks, sharks and kudas are best friends. Out in the Florida Bay and the Gulf there, if there's anything on the bottom, it holds life. And there's been a bunch of bull sharks and cobias around out there, and we had the baits to check it out. Plus, we didn't have to anchor with the new Rodan. We dropped that in. Uh, we moved over 10 feet. We were right on it. And then uh, we were trying to lure the bull sharks in to bring a school of cobias. I was in the middle of making lunch. A little cobia. Man, you sure do call it. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Scales, every degree of water. Hawks K Resort, find what lures you. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Battle Born Batteries. Costa Pro Series. Nikon. Spear1KeyWest.com and by Rodan Marine Systems. I'm going to rig a couple of surface cobia poles and a couple of fish finder cobia poles on the bottom and one shark bait. The, the cobias are always following the sharks. Out here in the bay lately, they sure have been. Man, it wasn't uh, five minutes after we set up uh, 
couple on the surface, which was as simple as a pinfish hooked in the back. Just throw them out there and let them sit on the grass. It's an old timer trick for catching cobias when you're chumming in the bay. And I don't think it was five minutes, like I said, before you're hooked up. Fish on. What do you got? I don't know. I was in the middle of making lunch. A little cobia. Baby. Is that? Man, that... you sure do call it. You said, pull up, we're going cobia fit. You get the rag. Right back to you. What pound liters on that flat line, buddy? Is that that doubled uh, 25? No, it's 40. Cool. Got the upgrade. Oh, golf been on fire today. The bay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Florida Bay. Florida Bay. Yeah. Like the, like the dolphins were right before this weekend. On fire. Well, he's not going to make the new 36, but he's a start. First one. You want to net him? It's in the big Yeti. It's in the Yeti? Yeah. Water's cold. First time I felt cold salt water in a long time. There we go. Good job, buddy. Fires. I got more hooks, can't get it. You were talking earlier about triple tails having spines. Well, everything out here got <laughs> some spines on it. Those things are, look at those things. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> you don't want those inside you of your You do not want those in your calf. Mm -mm. All right, I'm gonna let him go. All right, buddy, good job. Bring, bring some friends. Beautiful little day on the Florida Bay. The the size limit now is 36 inches on those things, so they bumped it up a little bit. So obviously, um, you know, he wasn't a keeper, but still, you know, it's something to do. Hey, listen, anytime you're bending the pole out there in the golf, it's it's fun, man. Can't get enough into the blue. Look, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hashtag us in some of your big fish photos, and we'll feature you as fan of the week. See you there. I was making a quick bait change because I want to make sure that we weren't, uh, we had a few cutoffs. And as soon as I touched the forward uh, pole that was on the bottom, I bowed over and the drag started screaming. I was like, man, I got the cobia we're after. But then 350 yards later, we're still just holding on to this freight train and I'm pretty sure that it wasn't going to be a cobia. Let me know when I need to go chase them. Now? Yeah, we're down to half. Once I realized how far out that sh that shark was getting, you know, the best thing is about that Rodan, you just push that pedal down and pull that thing up, and then we were able to get after him and try to gain some of that line back. Yeah, you know, it's a bull shark. There's no such thing as little ones. You know, there's so many uh, crab and lobster pots out there that yeah. you'll get you'll get cut off, you know. And, and we were hoping to get our eyes on that shark because it was something. But being it so dirty, we never really got to get our eyeballs on him, even though you fought him a long time, man. I mean, it was a good battle. Coming up, fish. coming up to the surface. There he is. What is it? It's a bull. He's right on top. Let me know about that buoy there, brother. He got. Once we went back after the shark and set up again, uh, the tide was starting to let let up. We did catch another cobia, and I think um, actually you caught a Spanish. Yeah. And but that was the last two real bites, and it just wasn't. It didn't feel like anything was going to happen. We had gone through six blocks of chum. But being that it's a tide was slack, and I felt it was time to get back after the triple tail. <laughs> he ate that thing There's so fast. There's two of them there. The one on the backside's got it in his mouth. See I know, he's big too. You're gonna, 
You're, I'll get you right on top of it. He's fit it out. Fit it out. Back up, back up. You clear? Got him. <laughs> Way to unwrap him before you hang tight. Might be the hardest fighter of the day. Well, that was fun, Scott. Thank you, man. A little something different, different. A little something different. Into the green. That line had those balls of rope on them, which seemed to be, you know, more places for shrimp and crab to hang out, which seemed to have a little bit, you know, bigger quality triple tails. Right. So we got back on that, and we, we ended the day there, you know, getting another half dozen fish. You know, even though, you know, we didn't find the big monster doormat, it was awesome. I mean, I, like you even said, you hit the dock anytime, and you're like, man, I can't wait. I need to take Maryland to do that. Yeah. Or, I can take my kids to do that. It, it was it was fun for all of us, you know, and it's not just an act. Take the little ones. Hey. Hey, you're welcome, buddy. Appreciate it. Fun stuff. Have you home in half an hour, maybe an hour.